everybody. My name is Kara Sanchez, and these are my two colleagues, Emily Mojica and Santiago Lolena. And we're working on the 2016 Shelly Comarathon competition with the second group. We're working on the body, the steering handling, and also the electric motor. So in the United States, we have a big issue with greenhouse gas emissions because of all the cars on the roads. So Shell created this competition to bring an awareness of the problem and to get students motivated to create a vehicle that's more energy efficient. In this competition, there was a lot of rules and regulations we had to follow, and they were basically the height, the width, the length of the vehicle, and also different components. But we focused on uh, just that, and also the energy sources that they gave us. Out of all three, we chose the battery electric. We used also two standards. One was the ASTM for the Anulum 6061, and also the electric road vehicle standards that were made by ISO. These are just showing very briefly the four designs that we came up with, and then we further refined it to choose the, the one we went with. Uh, from the different options we had before selecting uh, the right motor, uh, we chose to do the funding at the time. Uh, this would be the best uh, option also. Uh, it was a gear type system. Russia's DC motor with 1,000 watts, 48 volts, and it had efficiency over 80%. And due to competition regulations, we could not use the controller that came with the motor. So therefore, we decided to uh, buy the best option. It would be a TI uh, brushes DC motor controller that with all the parameters that we needed for the type of motor we had, we also decided to go for a lithium battery, 48 volts, 20 amps, which was under the allowed, uh, which was allowed to be used for the competition, and it was safest. So for our steering, we couldn't use any electrical, it was against the rules, so we had to research any mechanical that we could use. And the one that we found the most easiest and also the best that we could incorporate into the chassis was those found in the go-karts, which is right here in this schematic. Alrighty, so as you can tell from what you have in front of you. The body that we ended up choosing was option number four from that first slide I showed you. And the reason why we chose this was due to its aerodynamic shape, which uh, is, has decreased turbulent flow, which decreases our drag and allows us to be more energy efficient. And it's flawless assembly with the chassis. This is the simulation we did on SolidWorks. Uh, I just took out one of the options and then the one we ended up choosing. So you know what you're seeing here, you want to stay away from the neon colors. The neon colors represent a uh, turbulent flow which increases our drag and we don't want that. So that the design, which is this one that we ended up choosing, as you can tell, has more of the darker colors on that end of the spectrum. This is what the body, just the shell itself, looked like uh, after taking it off the styrofoam mold. Uh, this is our finalized uh, manufacturing integrated uh, motor compartment. It includes the motor within the wheel. Uh, it also has the microcontroller box, the uh, fuse box, uh, the lithium battery. Uh, this is our uh, up close uh, view of all the uh, finalized components. The, on top is the electrical box with all the necessary components. We have a fuse box that was 3D printed as well as the, the, um, another 3D printed electrical box that was made for the controller. Uh, this is our finalized um, energy system schematic that was made for uh, in order to understand the code and in order to uh, understand how everything was going to be connected. Uh, all the main components and what was going on inside the controller. Uh, this is our finalized electrical schematic. It has all the required uh, electrical components for the for the vehicle, for, for the horns, as well as the emergency switches. And uh, we also made a proportion and uh, system uh, diagram in order to understand where the main locations of all electrical components are going to be placed in the vehicle before starting the integration process of the of the vehicle. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, all the boxes were three printed uh, in order to uh, fix uh, to make up for other electrical components. For the, as you can see, the white box right here, uh, it was made uh, with a CAD model on SolidWorks. We included fence ventilation with a clear uh, removal top, and, and as well as the fuse box that can hold to uh, three it fuses with 360 degrees accessibility. Um, Right here, all the electrical components were modeled on CAD and placed 
on a, on a, on a, on a box. As you can see right here, a mounting plate was created in order to a water jet CNC cut in order to have the right mounting holes for all electrical components and make it more feasible to complete the task. So this is our finalized design of the steering system. As you can see, we did follow the go-kart steering and it was integrated completely into the system perfectly. For the simulation, we actually simulated on the spindle, as you asked before, and because the spindle was um, redone on the life. So using this, we did a factor of safety with the 700 newtons on the spindle to make sure that the spindle will not um, deteriorate or deform too much for the competition. As you can see, our factor of safety actually came out to 2.6, which is very good. Also, 700 newtons is actually a very extreme number for us because since we have two spindles and the force is actually distributed between the two, it would be about 400 newtons on each. But we wanted 700 newtons just to make sure that even using extreme conditions, our spindles did not fail. We used the Fawn Mises Yoko 2 as well to make sure that it would not bend or break in any part. And as you can see, everything, because it stayed in the range of blue and green, we were very good with this. We also did the resulting deflection, just like a cantilever beam. The ending point was the most deflection, but this deflection was so minimal that it would not cause any um, deterioration for us. When we were creating and constructing this, as we said, we had to uh, fix the lay of the spindle using a lathe to make sure that the axle actually fit through the board. And we also created two brackets. One was aluminum, so it could be actually welded onto the chassis, and the other one steel. And we had to create this because we could not weld the steel onto the aluminum. While we were optimizing the steering, the only difficulty we found was that we did not reach the eight meter turning radius, which is by regulations of the competition. So we actually had to lower the spindle, which was initially here. We had to lower it to get that eight millimeters, and it was perfect. So in being able to construct the body, we needed a mold. The mold that we ended up choosing was out of styrofoam, and we got it CNC cut and put together to come out with our shape that we would later do the fiberglass layup upon. This is an example of the technical drawing that we had to make that shows the different layers that needed to be cut and their separate dimensions. This is what the styrofoam uh, mold looks like. This was it in progress while we were laying up the several layers and putting them together, and this was the finalized uh, product. This was us during the fiberglass layup. We're doing a bottom and top here. Uh, we used the vacuum bagging technique and left it on the vacuum line overnight. Uh, this is a photograph of the top part of the shell of the body after it was removed from the mold. This is all about our body sanding and prep. We cut open the windows and sanded it to get ready for paint. As you can tell, we did it in a well ventilated area and used the appropriate safety equipment. Then we primed and painted the body before we added the windows to avoid painting them and causing a mess. And we installed the windows. Uh, we used black sand due to its ability to withstand uh, any applied loads uh, or impacts. And if it were to break, it does not break into sharp shards, which further assures our driver's safety as well as the safety of other participants that may be near the vehicle at that time. This is how the body looks like fully manufactured, but you can also see it in front of you live. Um. To, for speed control throttle that was implemented, we decided the best option due to uh, the size of the driver in the vehicle, it would be to have uh, the steering uh, a machine, uh, a piece that would hold the, the, the throttle at the steering wheel, as you can see. Uh, to test the motor, we decided to make a mount that would uh, allow the testing of the motor with no load. As you can see, reinforcing uh, plates were added in order to ensure that the, there, was a, there was no uh, vibrations when testing on the motor. Uh, right here, uh, when we tested, the we did a discharging test in which we let the motor run at maximum velocity uh, for uh, about eight hours. Uh, we, we also we, we, we recorded uh, RPM, voltage, and current during uh, this time every 20 minutes. These are our final results of our testing of the, of the motor. As you can see here, our current uh, slightly goes down. However, uh, what we wanted to see was our discharging rate, uh, which was needed for the competition. We noticed that uh, it discharged about 1.2 volts per hour. Uh, using this information, we knew more or less, and also the graphs that you can see that as voltage discharges, RPM, uh, as RPM also goes down as well, so they have a linear 
uh, they're linear proportional to each other, so it was, this was also very useful for testing at, during competition. So some of the elements of global design that we integrated into our project, for example, uh, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. I've talked about this a lot during this presentation. We focused a lot on the Formula One vehicles, which are typically European, and are to torpedo shape. So as such, that's how we started off with our designs to keep that shape in mind. Also, our battery and motor were purchased uh, from China due to the decrease in cost, because in China they don't have any additional uh, cost that went to the manufacturing of the battery and the motor, uh, as we do in the US, so we can get it at a reduced, highly reduced price. Uh, so the purpose of all of this, like we've said and the previous team said, is to increase awareness of the greenhouse gases that are damaging our environment due to the burning of fossil fuels and how alternative energy sources can aid in reducing these damaging effects. The Eco Engineering Club was started in order to increase this awareness and also to give students the opportunity to have hands-on ex engineering experience before they reach their senior design stage. And if you look around you, many of them are here. This is our Gantt chart. It shows uh, from August to present what we went through and the steps that we took from competition registration to the optimization of the vehicle. The division of responsibilities, each and every single team member from both teams had a hand in this vehicle. No one got away unscathed. And in conclusion, we ourselves focused on the fiberglass body, the motor, and the steering and handling components. The competition results, we passed technical inspection. It was 10, out of, it was 10 total points of inspection. It took us about three hours to get through. It, that in itself is an incredible feat as many teams go through and are unable to pass inspection and move on to the competition phase. Uh, during competition, we did experience an issue where we lost an incredible amount of energy and we were unable to perform at optimum speeds to be able to place. However, uh, the readings on our joule meter uh, told us that we were using about 52, we were, sorry, we were going at about 52 miles per kilowatt hour and how the previous team said we would have placed 13 out of, six, out of 15 uh, total teams that actually placed. For future work, the vehicle will be left to the Eco Engineering Club here at FIU to further optimize it for future years and hopefully work towards placing in the competition and not winning first place. A lot of the vehicles have been working on their, a lot of the teams have been working on their vehicles for many years. So this is just one step and still on the way to getting to that first place at competition. Suggestions that we have is to integrate multi multidisciplinary teams when it comes to senior design. The battery electric part of this is very daunting. It is a lot of work for a mechanical engineering student. So if it can be integrated with computer science or electrical engineering students as a senior design project, this would greatly help in moving <laughs> the vehicle forward to that first place prize. Also, uh, adding solar panels, regenerative braking, and a suspension system would be uh, things to work on the car in the future. And uh, here we have, this is already the end of our presentation, but we have some videos we'd like to show you and pictures of us at the competition, the vehicle running. Uh, at competition, it's also very intimidating because for the prototype category, they have all of the vehicles running, whether it's diesel, hydrogen fuel cell, or battery electric. They're all running at the same time, so you have some vehicles going at 15, 20 miles an hour, while ours is uh, slowly making its way down the course. <laughs> uh, these are a uh, photo of the group when we got there, as well as our group advisor, Andres Tremante. Uh, pointing out that we finished te technical inspection. <laughs> These are photos of the car. This, for example, is a test that they do on the seatbelt to make sure that it can withstand 1.5 times the driver's weight. They essentially lifted up our vehicle from the belt buckle of the, of the driver's seatbelt. Not very comfortable to do. And this is just, uh, now we can take questions. This is just a video to explain a little more about the competition if uh, you didn't know about it before. Any questions? ask about the, the batteries. Uh, did you come with a single set of batteries for the whole? Uh, one, battery. one battery. So yeah. next time you'll bring one for competition and one for before competition? Ideally, so yes. Um, the batteries are very expensive, so our budget this semester was limited. We weren't able to buy two. And due to the fact that it is not widely available within the US, we did purchase it from China, it takes almost a month to arrive. So all of those factors come into play, but for next year, that should be one of the target of the teams to have more than one battery at their disposal. Okay, you, you would put a lot of effort into aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. The question I have for you is, was there any benefit? 
quite frankly, at the speeds that we were going, no. <laughs> uh, for uh, increased speeds, yes, it does have. And where's the breakoff point? The breakoff point? Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you could have run faster, right. would it have had a benefit? Yes, the reason why is because like, we weren't able to reach the 50 miles per hour, which is all the testing was done with 50 miles per hour winds. 50 miles per hour. And that was the actually the limit of, or the least um, speed that we were supposed to get in competition, which is why we did not place. We could not reach the 50 miles per hour. So all our aerodynamics was done with 50 miles per hour. We also did it with 25 miles per hour, but because we were not sure that our motor was going to reach it, we focused on 15 because that was the minimal motor. Also, it, it does help uh, from based on the vehicles that did place first, second, and third, and so on. Uh, when you see, besides the fact that it's a beautiful vehicle, it looks like it was professionally manufactured. But <laughs> besides that, uh, when you see the the body, the way the contours, the way that they make it so that they even encompass the wheels inside of the body, uh, I believe honestly that that's what gave them that edge to be able to win the competition. Mm -hmm. And theirs was very low to the ground. I mean, I don't even know how the driver was himself. <laughs> but very was petite driver. Very petite driver. <laughs> Who was the driver? Look, she's back there. The very the petite driver. Who is the girl? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much.